What unsolved mystery would you like to be explained in your lifetime? I'd love it if someone found Forrest Fenn's treasure. To explain, Forrest Fenn was a gentleman with some serious cash. He ended up having a cancer scare and being told he was terminal, so he buried some of his bonds slash gold slash etc. in a cache and wrote a poem with clues on how to find it. Just like old timey pirates or what have you. He ended up surviving the cancer and doesn't really give any hints on the treasure except to say that he goes out like once every few years to make sure it's still buried in the same spot and it always is. That's how he knows nobody has found it yet. At least four people have died looking for this. One was fairly recently, like a year ago or something, which was the first I'd heard about it. I think it is a bit irresponsible of him to keep it hidden after that has happened. The best he's offered is a reminder that he was already an old man when he buried it, and it only took him a few hours in two trips to do it. Which means it's probably a lot closer to a road and a lot more obvious than people assume it would be. And I would repeat that for anyone reading this, bear in mind that he was an old man when he hit it. Sure, if you have to be out that way, it might be a fun day trip, but do not take any unnecessary risks. If it's out there, you're not going to have to Alex handled anything to find it. And no, that's not just what he'd want you to think. He literally was in his 70s when he hit it. It is not hiding in a place a 70-something would be unable to get to. Anyway, I'm sure it'll happen eventually. There are forums devoted to it and all, and again, he's likely hit it in an actually fairly easy spot. Also, I don't know that it's true Finn actually checks on it periodically, especially now that he's in his 80s and realistically, if someone did find it, they probably wouldn't announce it to anyone. Look, you can say that, but I've met people in their 70s and 80s who are in better shape than me. I'm not like an athlete, but I jog five times a week and regularly cycle throughout the summer. I'm no slouch. The M Cave Mystery. I remember hearing about this one and it still bothers me to this day. Basically some guy who was an avid hiker went back to visit a cave that he said was vibrating on his previous visit. He never came back from the trip and hasn't been seen since. He said some weird things before he went missing. He was self-destructive. But his body hasn't been found. We can't just brush it off as self-termination when there's no body to prove it. Voynich Manuscript. The materials used have been proven to be from the correct time period, but it's written in a still completely unknown language and has yet to be even partly decoded. I guess chances are it's medieval medical slash astronomical book. Also, the Taman Shud case. Unknown body found on an Australian beach, no sign of foul play or drowning, and had a strange coded message in his pocket. The body was found in 1948. He's never been identified. If I remember correctly, the labels had been removed from his clothes and he didn't seem to be from the area. Gonna second the Voynich Manuscript. If you haven't looked it up, I believe a museum has scans of the pages up for people to look at. It's weirder than you think, and I recall hearing people say that there is too much consistency for it to just be gibberish. Malaysia Airline Flight Missing. The Atlantic article was pretty convincing and good. Yeah, it convinced me. Spoiler. Basically, the local government tried to hide the fact that the head pilot had some family troubles going on, but independent investigation has led them to believe the pilot killed all the passengers by suddenly taking the plane so high that the air pressure dropped and everyone gently fell asleep. Then at the perfect moment when the plane was being handed off between two nations airspace, he turned the plane and let it fly in a random direction till it ran out of fuel and crashed into the ocean. Uncertain if the pilot killed himself prior or if that's when he died. As a kid, I was on some giant paid playground made out of cubes with various activities connected together in 3D. I panicked because I got in some sort of loop with literally no way out no matter what way I picked. I kept coming back to the same spot. Firefighters were called actually. I want to know what the hell happened. I had the same thing happen in one of those walk through haunted houses as a preteen. I ended up in a cardboard maze for three hours in the dark unable to find my way out and no one could find me until they took the thing apart because my parents freaked out. I had been separated from our group. I still don't know what happened and 30 years later I still can't go to those things even though I love Halloween and logically I understand what all of it is made of. I think in the back of my mind I'm afraid that whatever had me in there won't give me back if I go in again. Brandon Swanson, car breaks down, on the phone with dad, says something like, oh crap, while still talking to dad and supposedly walking to the town dad was waiting for him. That's it, never heard from ever again. Relatively recently too, just kind of makes someone wonder. 
In the morning, his parents reported Swanson missing to the police who advised them to wait as such behavior was not uncommon for young men his age. Uh, no. Look for the effing missing person. The escape from Alcatraz. I think they made it. Supposedly flowers were sent to their mother every Mother's Day after they escaped. Two tall women were seen at their mom's funeral and other hints suggest they are alive. I need to know what actually happened. I've done an extremely deep dive on this and I'm almost certain they survived. First of all, on average, two out of every three bodies in the San Francisco Bay are found, meaning it's very unlikely that all three of them died and no bodies were found, especially with the extensive search parties. Secondly, the police claimed that there were no robberies the night slash morning of the robbery, but it was later discovered that a 1955 Chevrolet was reported stolen by three men. Also, the authorities claimed no raft was found, but a raft was found on Angel Island. The cover-up leads me to believe that the authorities withheld other evidence regarding their escape to prevent embarrassment. This information, paired with OP's factoids, make it all but certain in my mind. What happened to my friend Daniel? He went missing during our freshman year of college over winter break. He was back home in California. He left his keys at home and walked away. He's never been seen since. I know he's probably dead, but a little part of me has always wondered if someone took him or if something happened and he's still alive. And I can't give up that hope until I know he's not alive because what if he is and no one believes anymore? Are you really alive if no one believes you are? I had a friend disappear a few years ago, walked out of a bar and was never seen again. He didn't drive so he was either on foot or hitched a ride. Police searched all over the area with cadaver dogs, nothing turned up. Lots of people said he's probably dead, but I won't believe it until a body is found. I know something about him that maybe others don't. He slept rough sometimes when he was stressed. I saw him walking down an alley once, totally filthy, and obviously had been sleeping outside for a few days. He could have easily hitched a ride far away and lived homeless in another town somewhere. I think this is what happened to some homeless people. They had a mental break, gave up on living a normal life, moved to another town where nobody knows them, and they just exist anonymously. It is definitely admirable to hold out hope for a friend who has gone missing like that. You don't want to give up on them, because what if? At the same time, don't let hope for a friend being alive turn into despair in your own day-to-day -day life years down the road. I can't possibly say when you should move on or if you should, but I hate to think of someone's life getting ruined because they hold out hope for someone who is almost certainly gone forever. Dark Matter. Why the F was it cancelled? It was so good! Just kidding. I want to know what the F Dark Matter is. I'm an astrophysicist working on dark matter. It's probably just an undiscovered particle that doesn't interact with light with lowish mass but not so low that they travel at very close to the speed of light. The most likely candidates are generally variations on this theme, which sounds boring to be honest since dark matter tends to have some pretty mystical properties in sci-fi, but it'd have huge implications on physics. The most exciting discovery in my opinion would be that there are whole complex structures right here among us that we can't detect only because their particles don't interact with our known particles, except the dark matter candidate particle which would act as a bridge. Can you imagine alien life forms that aren't far away on some distant planet or alternate dimension but that are living and breathing right next to or even within us? Aliens that can't perceive us at all only because we're made of entirely different sets of particles. How poetic! Realistically though, that's pretty unlikely since from our observations of galaxy interactions, it doesn't seem like dark matter interacts macroscopically in any way other than gravity. Compounded, of course, with the extreme unlikeliness that aliens happen to be in the same tiny region of space as us. So best not to keep your hopes up on any invisible aliens. But you know, effing maybe. That'd be a good sci-fi idea. Very random, but here goes. I lived in China when I was 10. I lost my favorite water bottle at the local pool one day. I moved to Australia when I was 11, so a year later. I ended up finding that water bottle under a bench in our schoolyard. I know because it has a sticker with my name on it. I don't know if I imagined the whole thing or my water bottle teleported its way to another country. False memory, probably. Something very similar happened to me once. I was probably 9 or 10, but I remember making this drawing at school and forming it into a paper airplane and flying it in the parking lot outside of the playground. Being the inconsiderate kid I was, I just left it wherever it landed. Sometime afterwards, weeks I want to say, I was at practice for my soccer league. 
It wasn't ran by the school, so the field was in a different location at least 12 miles away or so. A 25 to 30 minute drive through the city back then was a long trip for a kid. Before practice, I'm hanging around and see this piece of dirty paper tumbling along the sideline. Not sure why, but I was prompted to run over there and get it. It was the drawing slash paper airplane of mine. Freaky to think about, and it would be a very improbable coincidence, but you're right, it's just likely my brain doing weird things. Our brains, especially kid brains, just love to make connections and make things make some kind of sense, even in ways that seem impossible or supernatural. False memories can really be wild, and it can be hard for us to admit when something we remember is actually wrong, because dang it, if I can't trust my own brain, who can I trust? Madeline McCann, the girl who disappeared in 2007. I used to be so convinced it was the parents until I watched the recent Netflix documentary. Now I'm back to being unsure as hell. The main question I just want to know the answer to is if it really wasn't them, why did the cadaver dogs scent out Kate's shirt behind the couch and inside the closet? There's so much contradicting evidence, and the events of what happened afterwards with the Portuguese police make it all the more confusing. For Madeline's sake, as well as her siblings, I really hope the truth comes out. There is some controversy about the reliability of cadaver dogs. Clearly, they can be quite successful at finding actual human remains. When they indicate a spot and a body is found, we have validation that they are accurate. The idea that they can determine where a corpse has been is more problematic. How long does a body need to have been in that location? How long does the scent linger after the body is moved? How long does a person need to be dead before the dog can detect the death scent? How do the dog's training and handler's perceptions factor into this? We don't have reliable statistically sound data to answer any of these questions. Dogs can't tell us how certain they are about the scent they may have found, they just do what they are trained to do and what they get rewarded for. Also, I know documentaries are supposedly documenting facts, but be careful with trusting all of their information. There's proof of plenty of documentaries skewing information or presenting it in a really lopsided way because it's more dramatic. I know we want to believe documentary filmmakers have unbreakable integrity, but that isn't always the case. Where were humans before ancient Sumer Mesopotamia, or what happened to the people of Roanoke Island, and for God's sake, what happened to Amelia Earhart? With Roanoke, the name of a local tribe was written on the walls, and a local tribe suddenly started having blonde-haired kids after the colony disappeared. With Earhart, human remains and evidence of an American in a survival situation at around the right time were found on an island southeast of her last known destination. Unfortunately, they were found by a rather disreputable treasure hunter, so most of the archaeological evidence was lost, and the bones were so badly degraded that they think that a turtle's bones got mixed in with the human bones. Mesopotamia slash Sumer and such were early civilizations, not the dawn of man. Humans were spread across the world long before we developed agriculture and whatnot. We were hunter-gatherers for tens of thousands of years before we developed civilization. Humans have been a very widespread species for a very, very long time relative to history. Early Homo sapiens are widely believed to have evolved in Eastern Africa. I'd like to know what lies beyond a black hole. After entering the event horizon, what lies in there? Nobody knows. I'd like to know. If I'm correct in saying a black hole is just a really strong gravitational force that's been compressed super small, then I'd say there is no beyond. You just pulled into the center of it like it's a singularity, and then you're stuck there forever compressed a ton, with everything else that's stuck in there and also compressed super small. One explanation for why light can't escape is because the rug, space itself, is being drawn into it faster than light can run out through it. That suggests there's a constantly growing amount of space inside black holes. From within a black hole, this will look like a big bang. I think universes are nested inside each other like this. What truly happens after death? What happens to our consciousness? Do we experience nothingness just as we did before we were born, or do we actually go to some other place? I got put under anesthesia once for a dental operation. When I woke up over two hours later, it felt like it was one second later, not even that long, like it was an instant. I believe that since my brain did not have a chance to dream, since it was medicated to unconsciousness, that I had no internal record of time passing, time simply did not exist. There was no darkness. I wonder if death is this, not darkness, not anything. The instant we die, it's the end of the universe and the end of all time. There's no concept of time passing after death, not even a void. I mean, there is a chance this mystery will be explained, but it very specifically will not be within your lifetime. The assassination of JFK and RFK. 
I'm not one for conspiracies, but I'm of strong belief that the US government and other high ups were fully behind that. If you listen to the famous last speech he gave, it's about government transparency among other things. You can hear the shake in his voice, he sounds god awful terrified. The only th secrets he's threatening are government secrets. The only people who would want those hidden is the government. When I was little, I wandered off from my parents at a storytelling festival. When I turned back up, I had some type of mild wound on my hand, and all I would say about it was, baby cow bit me down there while pointing toward the nearby river. To this day, we had no idea what bit me. We lived in Florida at the time, so it could have been pretty much anything except for a cow since there were no farms nearby. All the who, what, where, when, why, and how re Epstein's murder and who all the pedos are. I really hope that justice is served to everybody involved, to show that you can't get away with it no matter how powerful you are. Notice how the sources are hidden. The media is completely silent on it. It was suddenly announced a self-termination without any evidence. All close associates of Epstein are either currently missing or recently passed away. Note, it's just a conspiracy as the media and people who have the capability to spread this message also conveniently were close to Epstein. The taste of fresh T-Rex meat. We even found some flesh and a thigh bone, so all we need is a genetic engineer to go insane and we'll find out how it tastes. Edit, on second thought it was definitely bone marrow, so it might not count as flesh. It was soft tissue though, so I'm still counting it. Then we can make Trexmex a thing. Now we're talking. I bet those T-Rex tails are heavenly in a stew. Are we alone in the universe? I 100% believe in intelligent life. Would be nice to see it confirmed. Doesn't even have to be intelligent, just proof of life. Good explanation for consciousness would be awesome. I like the hypothesis that our consciousness emanates from the emergent behavior of our brains processing information. An analogy I like. A record player and a record. Music is not present in either medium, but when you play the record on the player, you hear music. This makes a certain amount of sense for me, and I don't have a better hypothesis. Interesting topic. The purpose of the Night King. I wish people would stop reminding me how bad this was. I want to forget. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.